Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back for another video. Now, in case you haven't figured it out already, I'm gonna be building a custom whiskey barrel inspired bar in this video. Now to kick this build off, I just mocked up a design in SketchUp to give me an idea of what I wanted this bar to look like. Once I had a good plan in place, I decided to get started by basically just building a couple different sets of cabinets. To get those cabinets built, I used about three sheets of three quarter inch sanded maple plywood. I started by cutting these plywood sheets down into more manageable sizes. Once I had that done, then I could get started getting everything to its final dimension. Now I planned on painting these cabinets, so I didn't really need to worry too much about making sure my grain direction was all facing the same way. But if you're building cabinets that weren't going to be painted, then it would be good to think about that beforehand when you're planning out your cuts. By painting the cabinets, it allowed me to not have to worry about that, so I was able to maximize the amount of pieces I could get out of each of my sheets of plywood. Once I had my plywood cut down to more manageable sizes, I then cut everything to its final size on the table saw. Now this particular bar is going to have a two tier design, so I needed to cut the sides of my cabinet a little differently to account for that. To do this, I just used the table saw and circular saw to get close to my mark, and then I came in with a jigsaw to finish off the cut. I also used a similar approach for notching out a section at the bottom for my toe kit. Based on the plans that I created for this bar, I knew that I wanted to be able to have a couple cabinets that would house a good amount of whiskey bottles. So I needed to figure out exactly where those shelves needed to sit in my cabinet. To get this figured out, I took one of my cabinet side pieces and I drew a line where the bottom shelf of my cabinet would sit. Then I just took a couple different bottles to use as a guide to figure out how much clearance there would need to be. Once I had a good idea, then I drew another line where my second shelf would go. Once I had those lines drawn out, then I just took my opposing side piece and I butted it up against the piece I'd already marked, making sure it was perfectly lined up, and then I transferred those lines to the other piece. Now, the reason I did this was so that I could see exactly where the shelves were going to sit on the sides of the cabinet so that I could route out a dado groove for attaching these shelves. Attaching the shelves in this way will just add a little extra strength, making sure these shelves are plenty strong for holding all of these bottles. Now, there are a couple different ways that you can add a dado groove to your piece. Some opt to use a table saw with a dado stack blade, but I decided that I would use my router with a 3 quarter inch straight bit to cut these grooves. Now, if you're going to go this route, then it's important to do a lot of test cuts beforehand to make sure these grooves are going to turn out how you want them. I spent some time making sure my straight edges were set up perfectly, and I also made sure I was using a router bit that matches the actual thickness of my piece. Some plywood that claims to be 3 quarter inches is actually a little undersized, which can result in your groove being too big. You want a nice snug fit, so I did a bunch of test cuts to ensure that my groove was going to perfectly match the thickness of the material I was using. Now I didn't try to remove all the material in one pass, instead I did a couple passes, lowering my router bit deeper into the plywood each time. Once I was satisfied with my groove, I moved on to the next one I marked and just kept repeating this process until I had all of my dados routed out. As far as assembly goes, you could simply just apply wood glue in these dado grooves and that would be sufficient enough. However, I wanted to make sure these shelves were super strong, so I planned on attaching some screws from the other side of the cabinet. Now, none of these screws are going to be seen, so I figured, what the heck, let's overbuild this thing. To mark out where my screws needed to go, I just transferred a line where my grooves were from one side of the plywood to the other, and that would help me know exactly where they needed to go come assembly time. Speaking of assembly, there was one final thing I needed to do prior to getting these cabinets put together, and that was drilling all of the pocket holes for the support pieces. Now I got this knocked out as quickly as I could because the foreman was really paying close attention to my work here, and I didn't want to let him down. Time for actually one of my favorite steps of any build, and that's the assembly time. I just really love the whole assembly process, starting to see everything sort of come together um, that you envision and just sort of putting the pieces together. I mean, if you ever like Legos uh, growing up, then it's kind of like building something and putting the Legos together. So for these cabinets here, my next step is I'm going to work on attaching the shelves 
getting everything clamped together. I'm doing these uh, in separate sections. So rather than doing one huge cabinet, I'm doing four separate cabinets. So I've already got together two of the cabinets um, and now I'm working on the third one here. All right, so I'm just gonna slather some glue in here very generously. Um, I wanna make sure that I've got good coverage with that glue. All right, once I've got glue, a good amount of glue in one, I'm gonna move that aside now, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the second side. Now, I'm planning on painting the interiors of these cabinets, um, but if you wanted to leave it natural, you might just wanna be a little extra careful, maybe put some tape along here to make sure that you're limiting the amount of glue uh, or just, you know, wipe it off really well. Lock it down in those grooves. And then I'll make sure everything's flush on my front edge. All right, that's looking really flush on my front edge here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some clamps on here, make sure I'm square at all my corners, and then I'm just gonna sink some screws in on each side. attach these shelves. Now the next thing I need to attach is the support pieces. Uh, I'm gonna have a couple across the top here and then some along the back. And to attach those, I'm just gonna use some wood glue and pocket hole screws, uh, clamp everything together and add those pocket hole screws and that should be plenty strong. After getting all four of the cabinets assembled, I started to set them in place according to my original sketch and eventually joined them all together using screws. And for the first time, I was really starting to see this bar come to life. Next up, I decided to build some drawers for some of the cabinets to house the whiskey bottles. Now, I had originally just planned to use shelves here, but I figured using full extension drawer slides would really help those bottles just be a whole lot more accessible. Now, the drawer slides I'm going to be using in particular here are the Bloom Undermount drawer slides. I have installed a ton of drawer slides up to this point, and I just feel like they function the best. Plus, for this particular build, they were able to support the most amount of weight, which I feel like would be really helpful for housing all of those bottles. Now my plan for the drawers that would display all the whiskey bottles was to sort of just leave them open so that they could show off that huge collection. So I decided to think outside the box, literally here, and make the drawers have a bit of a different shape that would allow all of the bottles to be a little bit more visible. To do this, I made the front of the drawer box shorter than the back and I cut an angle on each of the sides. To get my drawer boxes assembled, I just applied some wood glue and clamped everything together. Then I came in with a few screws to add a little extra strength since these drawers would be carrying some weight. To cover up those screw holes, I just plugged them using some wooden dowels. Also worth mentioning, these undermount drawer slides call for using half inch or 5 8 inch material, so I constructed all of my drawer boxes from half inch plywood. I even chose to make the bottom panels half inch since, again, these drawers will carry more weight. everything installed for the drawer boxes, my next step would be getting the drawer slides installed in the cabinets. 
Getting these drawer slides installed was pretty simple because I had constructed my cabinets in a way that was going to make installing these go a little smoother. I could simply place the slides on the shelves and just screw them right in. And since I made my cabinet a frameless style cabinet, I didn't have to worry about adding any sort of shim pieces behind the drawer slides to allow them to freely slide. So to get them installed, I just set them in place and then set them back from the front edge according to the dimensions I would need for the drawer front to sit inside the cabinet. Then I just used a self-centering drill bit to drill some holes and attach my slides with some screws. And as you can see, the foreman showed up to inspect my work again. He's really making sure I'm doing my best on this project. But I tell you what, it's tough working under that kind of pressure sometimes. After his stamp of approval, I could continue installing these slides for the remaining cabinets. With seven drawers total, I had a lot of work ahead of me. There's just something so satisfying about getting a bunch of drawers installed and watching them soft close flawlessly. Next, I built a face frame for my cabinets out of some 1x2 poplar boards. Now, I got this frame put together and pre sanded, and then I applied some glue and worked on getting it attached to my cabinets. To attach it, I had pre drilled some pocket holes on the frame of the cabinet so that I could attach the face frame using some pocket hole screws. Once the face frame was attached, I needed to get it painted to match the rest of the cabinets. So I covered up all of my drawer slides and then gave it a couple coats of that black paint. Once the paint was dry, I could reinstall my drawer boxes and get to work on making some white oak drawer fronts. With the boards milled, I had to work on gluing up some pieces to get the size of drawer fronts that I needed. Once the glued up boards were dry, I cut them to size for each drawer and could work on getting them sanded and finished prior to installing. There was one additional step I had to complete prior to finishing these drawer fronts, and that was routing out a section on the tops of all of my drawer fronts for a recessed pull tab drawer handle to be attached. Now, I could have attached this style of handle directly to the drawer front, but that would have left a bit of a gap between the drawer box and the drawer front, so I decided that I liked the look of having it recessed a little bit better. I just used my router and a flush trim bit to take off a little bit of material for this drawer pull to sit in. Then I gave all of the edges a slight round over and sanded these drawer fronts before applying some Rubio Monocoat to them. Once finished, I got them installed on the drawer boxes by clamping them in place and attaching them with some screws from the front side of my drawer box. Now for the drawer fronts that couldn't be clamped on the right side, I just used some double sided tape to help hold the drawer fronts on while I pushed the drawer out from the back side and then attached it with screws. No joke guys, I feel like I've been working on this bar build now for forever. And then I look at it and I'm like, wow, I still have a lot more to do. I am going to celebrate a major win though, and that's by getting all of these drawers installed on this front face here. 
I don't know what it is about drawers, but they always seem to take me a long time. Even though I've gotten more efficient at it, it's just a time consuming part of any project for me. I mean, getting the drawer boxes built, getting the drawer slides installed, getting the drawer fronts built and attaching the hardware, it just takes time. So I am definitely happy to have that step behind me now. And I definitely think the rest of uh, the build should go a little bit quicker as far as getting the tops built and getting all of the finishing touches done. But there is one more thing that I wanna do for these drawers and that's for these four drawers here. Now these four drawers are gonna house a pretty extensive bourbon and whiskey collection. So what I wanna do for these drawers is basically create some sort of drawer divider uh, system to house these bottles. Now, my plan is to sort of have about five rows that the bottles can sit in, and I wanna basically just use uh, the leftover white oak boards that I had um, for installing this drawer system. I definitely uh, wanna make some slats where I can have some removable pieces, that way there's some adjustability uh, for different size bottles and a little bit more customization uh, in terms of that. Now I don't plan on attaching this divider system to the actual drawer. I want it to be something that can be taken out uh, if they decide that they don't want that or don't need that. Um, so I'm not gonna attach it, but basically just create some sort of grid system here with some removable slats uh, that I can keep these drawers a little bit more organized, uh, uh, these bottles a little bit more organized inside of these drawers. So that's the next step and the last step that I'm gonna be working on for these drawers and then they'll be totally done and I can move on to some of the finishing touches um, of this bar build as well as getting the tops made up and we'll be getting very close to the finish line. let me sort of paint a picture for you here. Now, this is the back of the bar, or some might say it's the front of the bar. I mean, this is the first thing that you're gonna see when you walk into the room, uh, and this is where you would actually sit to have a drink. There's gonna be a top uh, here that has a bit of an overhang, uh, and so the bar stools would sit under here. So obviously, this is a pretty important uh, section of the bar, and it needs to look really nice. So, what do you think of it? It looks pretty nice, huh? No, <laughs> right now it looks horrible, but I have a plan to fix that and make this section look nice. Let me show you what my plan is. So this is a panel that I glued up. It's not completely cut to size or anything, but I just wanted to sort of show you what my idea for this back section of the bar is. Now, like I said before, the whole purpose of this bar was to basically house a really extensive bourbon and whiskey collection. And so with that said, uh, we wanted to sort of mimic the look of a whiskey barrel as far as the design elements for this uh, bar go. Now, when you think of a whiskey barrel or bourbon barrel, uh, typically you see white oak uh, staves. And so that was something that, uh, like I said, we knew we wanted to add into to the design elements of this particular bar. So so for this section here on this back section, I plan on covering this whole section here with white oak boards as well as this side here that will be seen. Now this particular side of the bar, I'm not gonna put white oak on because it's just going up against the wall. So I'm not gonna waste white oak boards for that side but I'm basically gonna wrap this whole back section uh, in the side section here with white oak boards. And that's really gonna mimic the look of that whiskey barrel, which I think is gonna be pretty cool um, when it comes to the overall look of this bar. Now, that brings me to how I wanted to attach these oak boards to this back side of the bar. Now, as you can see, I put in a lot of support pieces here, and my plan is those are gonna be used for fastening the boards to the back of the bar. Now I had to put a lot of thought into how I wanted to attach these panels. One of my main concerns was allowing these panels to move seasonally just like I would any other tabletop I glued up. What I decided to do to combat this was use some figure eight fastener clips that would be attached to my back support pieces. 
Now these little clips allow the wood to move as it needs to, so my hope is that it'll help mitigate any wood movement issues. Now I've never actually installed them in this way with vertical pieces, but it seems like it should work just as well. We shall see. Now did I install way more fasteners here than was needed? Yeah, probably, but don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, don't worry about it sweetheart. Don't worry about it sweetheart. I wanted to make sure these panels were nice and supported, so I just took my time and attached each panel using those figure eight clips. All right guys, so the drawers for this bar are finally done, and I have to say that I really like the way that these turned out, and I think it's gonna be a great spot to store those whiskey bottles. Okay, so next up I have to get to work on adding the tops for this bar. Now there are gonna be two tops, one that's gonna sit down here and then another top that'll sit up here and have a bit of an overhang. So you know what I'm gonna do in uh, order just to save a little bit of time, let's just go ahead and uh, add these. Ta-da! See how easy that was, guys? <laughs> okay, so for these tops I ended up using two separate white oak boards that were about 20 inches wide by eight feet long. Now, it took quite a bit of work to get them into this state. As you can see, I applied several coats of tabletop epoxy, which was a process. Now, if you're curious about that process and how I applied this epoxy, then go check out my last video, which I'll leave linked below. It's all about the steps for, for applying this tabletop epoxy from start to finish. Uh, so, like I said, I'll leave that video link so you can go and check that out. Now, I don't have these tops permanently attached for right now, so we're just have them sitting on here so that I can go around and button up a few last minute things before this thing gets delivered. So what I'm working on now is I'm working on building a footrest for this bar. Now a lot of bars you see either some sort of box footrest like this or they'll have a rail uh, that's just a bar rail footrest. However, I'm not going to do a bar rail because those are really expensive so I figured I'd save a little bit of money by just doing a simple footrest. Uh, like this box structure here. So what I've done to create that is I basically just built a box out of some two by fours and then I'm gonna wrap this thing in some plywood uh, that's painted black to match uh, the front of the bar. So um, I'm obviously not going to attach this now. I'm just working on getting it assembled so that way when it gets to the client's uh, house, we can attach it on site but I need to try to get everything uh, prepared so that when we're there, we have all the pieces and it's just a matter of attaching. So I've also got this sort of lifted up. I've got the whole bar sort of sitting on these dollies just because that makes it a little easier to move this thing around. I mean, this thing is huge and it weighs a lot. So having it on these dollies allows me to um, be able to maneuver it some. So I'm just setting the uh, footrest on these supports I have that are on those dollies, uh, but eventually this will be on the floor. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I've already pre-cut all of my pieces. I'm going to go ahead and put them on here. I'm not going to attach them. I'm just gonna make sure that they all fit well and just work on uh, getting this uh, all dialed in. All right, so since the whole point of a footrest is to have feet resting on it, and with that, there could be uh, more potential weight on this corner, and I don't want this wood to uh, chip off or anything. So what I've done is I've just cut a piece of this aluminum trim, and I'm gonna place it on this edge here as well as my corners and that'll hopefully just protect this wood a little bit more. All right guys, so one of the last things that I need to do before I can get this all taken apart, get it on trailer and ready to get sent to the client's house is I wanna add some trim to this outside border here. Now, for this top bar, uh, they wanted a bit of a border, a bit of a lip so that, you know, glass and stuff wouldn't just slide right off. So I have a bit of a lip, um, which, you know, I created this border all around this top one here. And to attach it, I just uh, sank some screws through this into the top here. And obviously now I want to cover those up. So 
To cover it up, I'm uh, gonna use some of this metal uh, trim here. You can see one side is not metal, and then it has a very thin layer of metal on top here. This is more just for appearance, so that's why I thought this might be a good option. Also, I can just uh, apply some like liquid nails or something. I'll probably also add in some nails just as you know more decorative uh, pieces. To attach this trim, I just applied some clear construction adhesive to the back, making sure not to get too close to my edges to prevent squeeze out. Then I placed it along my wooden border. Now I did use clamps in combination with tape here, but honestly the clamps were not needed and they did kind of leave an indention since this stuff is so thin. Really the tape in combination with the instant grab construction adhesive is really all that's needed for this type of application. Now this trim does come in different sizes. I applied the two inch option here on this top border, but I also got a smaller size of this trim that I'll be applying a little later on in the video to the back side of the bar. As I mentioned before, the client really wanted to mimic the look of a whiskey barrel for this bar, so these will kind of represent the rings on the barrel. Now, it's kind of hard to perfectly match that exact look, but this trim helps us achieve that look a little bit more. After a long journey, we finally got this bar to the client's house and could get it set up in its new home. Now this thing was a beast to move around, so we utilized those dollies as much as we could to get it most of the way there. This is also where I can introduce you guys to the new owner of the bar. Everyone, meet Andrew. He's a really good friend of ours and we've been working together to help make his bar dreams come true, if you will. With the bar in its final position, now it was just a matter of putting the pieces back together. I started by attaching the lower top using some screws into those figure eight clips. Then I worked on getting all of the drawer boxes back in place. we installed some support brackets to the back side of the bar that the upper top would attach to. Now we had to order some more of these brackets so for the time being we attached the two that we had. These two brackets can support up to 500 pounds so they're plenty strong to carry the weight for now until those other two brackets come in. The other brackets will be used mainly for extra stability on this long bar top. Once the brackets were installed, we could get the upper top attached. Then it was time to attach the footrest. Now I had attached a board to the back of my 2x4 box so that I could simply attach screws through the back of my box straight into the back of the bar. Once it was attached, I set about wrapping it with my plywood pieces and then attaching the aluminum trim. Lastly, we added the rest of that metal trim to the bar to emulate those whiskey barrel rings. To attach this trim, we just applied the construction adhesive and taped it up with some painter's tape and left it to dry for a few hours before removing that tape. The 
bar was fully set up in its new home. All that was left to do now was to get it stocked. With the bar fully stocked now, the new bartenders showed up, ready to serve. I definitely think we were able to solve his storage problem by giving his collection not only a cool new home, but making them a whole lot more accessible. Plus, now he has a special area in his home where he can entertain family and friends like us. As you can see, he's already making me a drink to celebrate the end of another build. I have a feeling he's going to get a lot of use out of this bar, and I'm thankful that he trusted me to help him bring his vision to life. If you made it this far in the video, then I hope you got some enjoyment out of it. If you did, consider giving it a like for me. That really helps my channel and I'd appreciate it. Thanks so much for watching guys. I'll see you for my next build. Bye.